We're in the Cascade Mountains in Washington State, not too far from Mount Rainier in Seattle, getting ready to ride the 250-mile-long Palooza Cascade State Park Trail. It's the longest rail trail in the United States. For this ride, we chose a section of the trail between Lake Easton and Hayek because we wanted to ride through the longest rail trail tunnel in the U.S., the Snoqualmie Tunnel. If you hang on till the end, we're going to talk a little bit about where we camped. Well, we're about to start our ride on the Palooza Cascades State Park Trail. And it took us a minute to find the trail, but we're in Easton, Washington, and you're just right near the fire station. And we're heading for the, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, Snoqualmie Pass Tunnel, which we think is about 17 miles away. Uh, the wind is blowing at us. Yeah. Yay. It's a little, chi little chilly this morning. It's 57 maybe right now. We're the highest 60 today. Um, we're not sure what this due to our sign behind us means, but I guess off well, we go for off the adventure. We, go. we jumped on the trail next to these guys, which was near the Easton Fire Station. We rode 32 miles round trip. The trail follows a corridor of the Chicago-Milwaukee-St. Paul Pacific Railroad, and it was completed in 1909. By 1980, the railroad had ceased operations on the right-of-way, and the state acquired most of the corridor. They originally named it for John Wayne after a lobbying campaign by an outdoorsman who was a big fan of the cowboy actor, even though the Duke himself hadn't spent any significant time in eastern Washington. They changed the name to the Palouse to Cascades State Trail in 2018. What if the bears decide they want to hibernate in that cave? Ah, uh, it's too many. They like nature. Okay, I have a bear fixation this morning, but maybe they're down here getting a drink, not up here with us. What do you think? I don't think they can climb that. I don't think you're good to go. Well, you always send me first, so I'm the bear bait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you even know how to hit your SOS on your phone? I don't know. I haven't looked at I my heard phone. somebody, something growling up above us a minute ago. <laughs> I think they can leap out of trees. Well, I figured he'd get you because I heard him growling as I hit. Well. But I was watching. I was ready to hit you're, SOS. You're, you're a lot more sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No bears yet. And this trail is, while it's a nice trail, wide, it's not particularly as scenic as some of the others we've seen. I don't know what scenic means to you. I see beautiful pine trees that we're riding in the middle of. Yep. Yeah. But I don't see this landscape and the mountains and whatever oh, around like, like we've seen in a lot of the other trails. All right. Well, I'm happy with the pine trees, <laughs> but this is probably a 2%, 3%. Yeah. Steady uphill grade, so the good news is it'll be easy coming back. 
But right now it's a slog getting up the hill. Yep. You and were... we've only gone, we've gone about five miles of this trail, of the 16 miles we need to go today. <sighs> Let's keep going. And off we go. Catchless Lake is both a lake and a reservoir. It is a natural lake, but its capacity is controlled by Catchless Dam, a 128-foot high earth fill structure built in 1917. It's really weird to see these stumps along the water's edge, but they were from trees cut back in 1917 before the lake was dammed up. Well, since the area was gonna be flooded and the logs are worth millions, it seemed to make sense, but it sure makes for a really weird landscape today. This is a mile 15, give or take. Another restroom, so that's three I think we've seen, which is good. At the hike trailhead, there's a place to fill your water bottles. There's plenty of restrooms. They're single file ones, I don't know. All right, we're about to enter the longest rail trail tunnel, I think in North America, at least is a safe thing to say. I th it's almost three miles long. Wow, three miles long. Wow. Wow. It's going to be freaking cold in there and dark in there and scary in there. And there'll be bears in there. I was going to say, that's where <laughs> they hibernate this thing for the with winter. bears today. So we thought we'd just say, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> Hopefully we'll come out the other side. Or, yeah, we'll see what happens next. Yeah, he thinks I'm going first to dig big, dark, scary three mile tunnel. He's nuts. This, I'm scared. The 2.3 mile long tunnel completed in 1915 is the main attraction on this ride. And what you'll be able to see in the tunnel is gonna depend on the power of your bike light. So get as many lumens as you can. And this has all the trappings of a modern horror movie. It's cold, it's damp, there's dripping water, and it's pitch black. Some bicyclists shuttle between Cedar Falls and Hyatt to take advantage of a downhill run. But keep in mind, the Snoqualmie Tunnel is closed every year from November 1st to May 2nd due to ice potentially falling from the ceiling. It takes roughly 20 minutes to bike through the tunnel and 45 minutes to walk it. And it's a unique feeling to know you're one mile inside a mountain.
day we were on the other side of the big scary tunnel. It took a long time to get through that tunnel. It wasn't a bad ride, but my hands are absolutely frozen. Oh, yeah. I wonder what it would feel like on a warm day. Probably absolutely frozen too. How was your ride? Yeah, it was all right. A little bit, you know, with the lights coming at you. Sometimes people didn't have lights in, in their groups. And This is definitely a holiday thing to do because there's people walking through the yeah. tunnel and riding through yeah. the tunnel. It's a busy spot. Yeah. Some walking too abreast and there wasn't as much room as I, as I would like to have. Sometimes going slow, I get a little more wobbly than I'd like to. But we survived. We did. What do you guys think? Should we no ride bears. There? I like this trail. I'm glad we tried it out. It's different, but I do have one complaint. And I know what that is. The surface they use is pea gravel, which is easy for them to maintain. Um, looks nice, but it, especially in the center between oh. the lanes, it's real soft and both can make you a bit unstable and it's harder to pedal through. But, you know, otherwise the trail's nice. Um, the tunnel was, was pretty wild. Um, especially with the people coming in it most of the time. It, tour it was a tourist yeah. attraction. Well, most of the time the tunnels we've gone through have not had a lot of people that we've met. But this being... Labor Day. Yeah, and being two and a half miles long, there were a lot of people both walking and riding their bikes. And you just had to be cautious. They all had lights, so you could see them already. This still is not my favorite surface. No. Well... I gotta be really careful. I don't know. It makes me nervous. I don't. I'm sure it's fine for most people, and you know, to call me a wimp and whatever. But I just, I don't know. I haven't wiped out yeah. yet, so all is good. Uh, Let's keep well, knocking on wood. Bears are probably faster on it than you are. Oh God, yeah. Bears <laughs> can run 35 miles an hour. By the way, did you know? We're gonna try this Lake Easton State Park side tour. We chose the Lake Easton Resort because it was close to the section of the Palooza Cascades Trail we wanted to ride. So we thought we'd take a minute and tour the Lake Easton Resort. It's beautiful in the pines. I mean, you can't fault the pines. Um, there's a pool up in the main office, near, next to the office, bathrooms, uh, a rec room, and here's us and our rig. And our spot, it's a little bit of a tight spot, but it's a pretty place. The campground has a gate in the back end that takes you right into the state park and right near a really nice looking picnic area right on the lake. If you liked this ride, hang on till the end of this video and we'll give you a couple more suggestions of rides you might like to see.